This is a video about doing Bano's work on a BMW S54 E85 M Roadster Z4. Um, and the reason I'm making this video is because this car is different than the E46 M3, which all the information out there is on how to do it. And the big difference is right here, the clearance between this bulkhead and the end of the Vanos. Unlike the E46 M3, you cannot put this Vanos in back in the car with the spline shafts attached and the pistons bottomed out all the way in the board. There's not enough clearance. You have to put the spline shafts in the hubs into the cams and then bolt them together with the Vanos here and then push the Vanos forward. The problem with that is is that there's no way to verify or to know if your pistons are back fully in their bore where they need to be because once the engine's at top dead center for cylinder number one and you have the BMW timing bridge on, which is right here, and the dowels are through these holes, which the engine's not that way now. Um, I've rotated around, but anyway, through these holes and the timing bridge is sitting flat on the head these need to be fully bottomed out in the bore. So the engine is um, top dead center, cylinder one, and the cams are fully retarded. And that's where the pistons need to be. But you can't really, because of the clearance, it's very difficult to find a way on this car to make it work because there's no way to verify these pistons are backed out in the bore. Um, now, if you just, the one way that I started to do it was with the teeth way out for the spline shafts and then tighten one of these bolts, connect your uh, pistons to the spline shafts and then push the Vanos forward. Now the hubs will be tight and in theory that'll push the Vanos pistons all the way back in the bore as it goes forward, they'll slide backwards. And the problem is in reality, because of the clearance and because of just the way stuff moves around, at least for me, it got very close, but the pistons would not go all the way back in the bore that way. They were close. And the reason why I know that is because I made this little tool here. It's just a wrench with a torque socket taped to it because of the clearance that allows you to actually take the pistons off, the piston caps off while the Vanos is mounted in the car and see where the pistons are at. Um, I found that when you did it that way, it was really close, but they, they just weren't all the way back where they should be. And the reason why I know they're not where they should be is because when the Vanos was off the car, and I did the seals, the pump disc, and everything else. Um, I pushed the pistons all the way back, hanging out of the board, put the caps on, took the caps off, and then took a measurement of where the pistons should be once they're butted up against those stops on the, on the uh, caps, the heads of the caps. And what I found was they're different. The intake piston sits about six tenths of a millimeter before the complete end of its bore, the exhaust is about 1.2 millimeter. So with the caps off, there's a bore the pistons slide in. You can measure here how far it is from the end. And that's, that's when it's completely butted up against the stop and the cap, that's where it is. So the way I found to do this, that worked at least for me, again, there's, there's like no information out there about this, um, not a ton at least. Uh, BMW makes a special tool and TIS, they recommend two special tools. One, you're going to put air in the Vanos and the other one is a solenoid box that's, sorry, a box, electronic box. You connect the power that switches the solenoids on and off. One allows you to put air in the uh, Vanos and move the pistons fully back. And the other one makes you, allows you to move it fully forward. And there's different buttons on the box when the vein is under air pressure, you can do that. I mean, that, those two specialty tools are like several hundred dollars. Um, and that's the way you're supposed to do it on this car because there's no other good way to push those pistons back. It just, the, 
the clearance just doesn't allow you to just really verify that and get a good um, conclusion that they're back in the board. So what I did and what worked for me was again, take the caps off, put the vanos back in the car with the caps off. You're gonna push the pistons forward enough to give you access so you can bolt them to the spline shafts. See, that's the problem. If the pistons are all the way bottomed out where they should be, you can't bolt them to the spline shafts. There's no way to get access to the uh, part where they connect. So they have to be out of their bore. So what you're gonna do is push them forward, rest the vanos with the longer bolts here, get the piston started to the spline shaft, caps off, and then with the helical gear out almost as far as it'll go, you'll see a bunch of teeth hanging out. You're gonna tighten down one of these bolts to lock it down. And this is with the engine at top dead center, or the pin in. At that point, you're going to push the vanos forward. And because the helical gears are locked, it's gonna push the pistons back in the bore. Now, it just worked out that when you do this, it's not as clear as you think it is. Sometimes they go back and it's like, sometimes they don't. Little differences in the amount of spline teeth or te that showing in the, from outside the hub seem to make a big difference. Um, like it more than it visually looks like it would make. So that's why I'm saying to do this with the caps off because I did it with the caps on and I took the caps off and measured it to make sure the pistons were fully back. And they were very close, but they weren't. And then I did it again with the caps off and I can actually see the pistons. You can see when they're off, the pistons going back. And then you can push the vanos forward more and actually hold the pistons. You just tighten these up a little quarter turn at a time. You'll see them pistons all the way at the end of the board. Don't let them come out. And then what you're gonna do when everything is tightened up put back, then you're gonna get the caps. And when you put the caps on, this hub's gonna be loose. These hubs are gonna be loose. So what that's gonna do is you're gonna put the caps on. It's gonna push the piston. It's already back. It's back too far now, just a little bit, right at the end of the bore. And it's gonna, like I showed you those feeler gauges, it's gonna be a little bit um, in front of that. You're gonna put these caps on and you're gonna do it evenly, tighten them evenly, that's gonna push the piston just a hair, and it's gonna be right where it needs to be, and the spline shafts are gonna go up a hair, get them right near where it needs to be. So the piston is gonna be fully back in the bore. Engine, camshafts, fully retarded, the bridge in, the pins in the crank, that's all you need. If you have those two things, pistons back in the bore, cylinder one, top dead center, camshaft bridge flat on the head, each side, pin goes in and out, that's it. Your engine's in time. There's nothing else to worry about. Um, a couple things I found, tools that really made it, um, I found made it easier for me, I'll show you here, was um, the feeler gauges, right? To measure where the piston is and the bores when you had the caps off the vanos. Um, this pick kind of pick opposed to this kind of pick when you're doing the seals, which really mine were like brand new, um, but anyway, this pick is a lot thinner. And just disregard the shape, but this pick is a lot thinner, which makes it easier to get at the seals. Uh, I found that to be really helpful, opposed to like a big kind of pick like that. Also a razor blade like this, this is the best way to get these caps off. Um, you take the bolts out and you can kind of rock them a little bit and you play with them, rock them, rock them. They'll loosen a the hair, but they're still hard to get off, at least for me, because of the O-ring here. This kind of razor blade stiff, it won't break. And you can just push it in and just wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, and the caps will come off. So this really helped me a lot. Um, this is just a pin. You should be familiar with this. If you're thinking about doing this job, the BMW bridge, don't use this. Um, I made another video. It's not accurate. Um, it's close, but I don't recommend it. 
um, the tool that I showed you to get the um, Torx bolts off the caps for the Vanos. Um, you may just be able to buy a Torx thing that fits. I don't know, but I made this. And you could even cut the Torx with the uh, some kind of saw, and you can make it even shorter if you want it. But this gives you enough clearance to take the caps on and off with the Vanos in the car. 24 millimeter wrench for rocking the cams back and forth. Now this I want to show you. Um, so you're supposed to torque these hub bolts to 14 newton meters, right? The problem is there's no real way to do that on the exhaust side with the Vanos in the car. So people tighten it by hand. They go by what they guess it is. They put marks. Um, I don't trust that myself. Um, what I found was that pretty much all of the crow's feet on the market that are 10 millimeter that fit those are 3 8 inch drive. A 3 8 inch drive torque wrench is not accurate at this low of uh, rating, this low of foot pounds or newton meters to accurately torque this. It just, it has to be, um, torque wrenches aren't accurate the very lowest and very highest end of the ranges. So what works is a quarter inch torque wrench, a quarter inch extension, a quarter inch three eighths adapter, and a 10 millimeter three eighths drive crow foot. And the way I know it works is because I tested on a couple bolts. I did it with just a regular socket and the torque wrench. And then I did it with this setup and I compared them, right? So I would torque one one way and then put the wrench on, see if it clicked, torque, the, torque it with the other tool and then put the other way on and see if it clicked. And I found that it is pretty accurate. Um, it's really close. Um, so what you're gonna do is if you want to torque these down now some people just take the whole venos off the car again to me which is crazy you just you know did all that work and now you're going to take it off um when you can buy this set up here and you torque it like this right now you can rotate the engine so you can have these bolts wherever you want them and this is how you do it and it works now Interestingly enough, the intake side, you don't even need that. You just rotate the engine and you can just get a socket with a shorter extension and torque it. No problem. Um, so I think it's really important for these bolts to be torqued where they should be because there's a friction clutch here, which means the tighter they are, that's going to change the friction of that clutch with these cupped washers. So, and I found that just doing it hand tight and trying to guess what it was, my hand was not right. Um, I did not tighten it nearly as tight as it should have been using my hand. And the last thing you wanted these bolts to back out, uh, that would be awful. So I'd recommend using a torque wrench. I'd recommend using a crow's foot. It does work. Um, I think Proto and Snap-on actually sell quarter inch drive, 10 millimeter torque, uh, sorry, crow's feet. They're really expensive. Um, I got this whole set for like $16 at Harbor Freight. Um, so that's torque wrench, um, 32 millimeter inch and a quarter socket. That's to remove the chain tensioner to, um, I replaced the timing chain guide with the Bezian timing chain guide and an inch and a quarter, 32 millimeter wrench. And that helps you just, if you want to initially get the timing chain, um, tensioner off, you can use that or you can use the socket to get it on you need this socket um and you want to put something in it because you have to put tension on it to get the thread started so um anyway that's what i recommend that's what worked for me that's how i did it e85 z4n um venos bezian pump disc new seals bezian chain tensioner new sealing plate i did not do the bezian seals for the uh, manifold and uh, new bolts for the um, camshaft sprockets that you can't see. Alrighty, hope this helps somebody. Goodbye.